Yeah, all right, boys, let's get this party started. Oh, delicious. Oh, hey. Hey. Well, so you are. Be asking you the same thing, motherfucker. Uh, we haven't even started doing anything. Okay. Well, I guess I should answer your question. I'm the nostalgia critic. You're pretty much right. Yeah. How do I look? Perfect. Nice. What are you? I'm myself. What, as a Titan Slayer? Accurate. Or just call me Eric Yeager, I don't know, either way it works. Or Lee, or Lee, by either one. Brennan Yeager. Welcome back, it is Spook Month. Yes, and it's actually Spook Day. We're here at the annual Fucktard Movie Theater. <laughs> We're gonna watch some Cliché and creepy shit. Yeah, but at least for the two videos, the first two videos. Yeah. Well, the first two we've seen before, and many times, in fact. The, the last one, something completely new, and I'm excited for that one, but we'll save that for last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody, let's just gotta get the first two out of the way. Because again, we've already seen them. Yeah. So, damn, yeah, that looks authentic as shit. Yep. So, room temperature like they make it in the theaters. Basically. Good going, fag. So, the first two videos are, are my Tad's top videos. The top 22 gaming creepypastas and the top 22 non-gaming creepypastas. Remasters from 2014. So we're just gonna start with gaming creepypastas, and non gaming, and then the special mystery one for our last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done an hour long reaction video in a long time. Hopefully, that new computer can keep up. Yep. I have some candy on the side. Some candy. Someone's been sitting in my candy. Somebody forgot to flush my candy. <clears throat> Hurry up, I'm gonna eat my popcorn. <laughs> this is a slashing lights, scary and creepy content, disturbing violent and graphic images, jump scares, pop-ups and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Ever since video gaming became popular in the 70s and 80s, there have been creepy occurrences, hoaxes, glitches, and finally, creepy pastas about the strange realm of video games. They have been around for a long time, and no matter how much we say it's just a game, it still finds a way to creep themselves back into our mind and present us with an unnerving experience after the game is turned on. Now, we are giving you our list of the top 22 gaming creepypastas. Damn, dude, this is so nostalgic. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Unknown format. Uh oh, demon, a demon game. Oh, Unknown no, no. format is a creepypasta, which is about how the player rips a the a friend's game collection, Next one. uses a torrent to download and mount the games. However, when he switches the computer to a Japanese language, all the games he plays turns into a nightmarish vision of their former selves. To top it off, this gameplay causes the player to start going insane by some of the imagery as in place in the story. Or, you know, just this may not be the, the most famous or popular creepypasta you can find, but in my opinion, it's told in a new perspective that is not commonly used in creepypastas. 
could have just been a graphical glitch. I mean, like, okay, this is, like, this is fucking out my game, I should stop. JVK1166Z.ESP JVK is a creepypasta based on the game Morrowind. According to this creepy pasta, if you start the game, when you launch the EXE, you'll start off in a new People game where all the main characters have been killed, causing the game to be unbeatable. As you wander around the sandbox, you'll notice a weird in-game creature called the Assassin that follows the player, Assassin's watching creep. you and doing generally creepy things. If you stand thing, idle, very you lose There's health. Creepy things. And during the whole duration of the game, you will constantly be losing health. Once the player is dead, it's said that the assassin crawls all over the player's body and lets out a menacing screech. I like how this doesn't scare me anymore. <laughs> the Hall of Tortured Souls. Well, as far did. back as the early well, 90s, it's just images of the people who made it Microsoft and actually turns have been out slipping it's... easter eggs into their software. Microsoft Office is very notable for this. In the 97 <laughs> edition, <laughs> Rudimentary Flight Simulator, Pinball Game, and Magic 8-Ball were hidden inside of Excel, Word, and Access, respectively. Then there's Excel 95, whose developers hit a creepy maze game called The Hall of Tortured Souls. The title alone would be bad enough, but they went further with the addition of low-resolution shots of the dev team plastered against garish red walls. Those walls aren't red, it's just images of people. The only thing that's red is the floor. Super Mario 64, damned. A glitch cartridge of Mario 64, Super next Mario one. 64 glitch damn. cartridge of Zelda. It's standard sure. creepy Mario pasta. With a few things done right and a little differently. Basically, <laughs> okay, as I'm the story sure. goes, the player goes to the local game store and out of a pure nostalgia this, rush, this right he tries to ass. get a Nintendo 64 and a few games for it. However, when he goes to buy it, the game owner gives it to them for free due to the complaints the old owners gave them about the game. They then head home and play it, and the creepy and gruesome events unfold. There's literally no gore at all, so it's like, the damn game glitched. Luna game. Oh yeah, I remember this shit. Well, it doesn't have to have Our gore. Our be scary. may know about this one. Yeah, but it's the like, Luna it's, game it's kind of expected at this point, because all these stories have that, but individual. the game was creepy to shit, the popular the fan creepy shit, question really daily. Like, when it was uploaded, it got a rather fast reaction to its scary jump scare content, and it was taken down rather quickly. This led to EQD's new standard for submission. However, the damage was done, and the bronies who played are already scarred from the tormented soul of Apple Bloom that appears in the final splash page. Since the creation of Luna Game, there have been several more that have been released, but none have the initial scare factor in the first one. To offer. Okay, I'm, I'm eating my words. Hero Brian. Oh, Hero Brian, I remember that. Hero Brian. I remember that post on Twitter where it was like, now that Steve's in Smash, every, patch no, ghost every time Brian they patch the game, it has to say, remove, removed Hero Brian. Pictures of Hero Brian began popping up in the late summer of 2010. The most well known and most common rendition of the rumor is that a gamer, while in single player, found an NPC with a default skin, but with white eyes. Following the encounter, strange occurrences started happening in this game, such as man-made objects appearing that he did not create, trees missing their leaves, perfect 2x2 two -two tunnels underground lit with redstone torches, and pyramids of sand in the ocean. Soon enough, more and more Hero Brian pictures were appearing on forums. Pretty soon, Notch tweeted about the subject saying, Hero Brian isn't real in any way. No, I never had a brother. Well, there's a half brother that I never met. But he's not in the game. That seemed to raise further questions, and more Hero Brian pictures continued to appear afterwards. 
The game developers even made a joke out of it and added removed Hero Prime at the end of some of the game's patch notes. We may never know if Hero Brian is a lost soul stuck in a video game or a hoax, but it keeps us interested. That's Gary's mod, obviously. You're not fooling anybody, pal. Oh, that dumbass green screen. Pokemon Buried Alive. Buried Alive is a supposed hidden code in the original Pokemon, 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 Pokemon Red and Blue versions. <laughs> it replaces Cubo's <laughs> mother as the boss of Buried. Pokemon Tower. I remember talking Town. about it on a video before, but... A battle will commence and show a horrific model of the long corpse like, reaching out of the ground. I mean, like some Buried kind of, Alive uses a number of I mean, high like levels, a, so like the battle it wasn't like be extremely tough. Like like if the player loses the battle against Buried Alive, he will exclaim about raw meat, followed by several lines of gibberish. Before proceeding to Zaldo. drag the player underground like, with him, the game on the screen shows buried alive uh, holding like, uh, the dead corpse of the player. There would usually be like corrupted. Uh, no, it's Zaldo, not Zaldo. It is? Yeah. Oh. So I'm trying to be creepy, we know it's you! The theater. The game in question is indeed called The Theater, and was developed by a company called Salida Software. This company made learning softwares, so The Theater was probably meant to be some sort of educational entertainment game. The game was obviously never finished, probably from the lack of funding or the whole company going under. Players talked about this game coming out at around the same time as Doom. Back in 1993. Yeah. You know what? Just when you like eat, Switch, you bite, it was very you bite a certain bar from inside your mouth. Yeah, so right in the center of my bottom lid. Have it denied playing it due to the what? That's like the worst the part, part for that. There was also One of the bad things about it is like it creates mouth sores. But none were like the original Sometimes. claims. The game was set in a first person perspective with flat sprites in a 3D environment that was extremely glitchy. The original idea was to select a movie from the posters on the wall, enter the theater, and play a minigame. But what's described in the story is what happens if you don't select a movie. If you continue to enter the theater without choosing a movie, odd, sometimes creepy things will happen. Religion past me. Of course, what else would happen? Increases variables to reach values that weren't meant to, resulting in things appearing. Is this space sp uh, spaghetti noodles? It is a very well written pasta, <laughs> and we suggest you give it a listen or a read. It's probably just jumping rope. Why would you walk towards him? Oh, what? What else would you do? Kill Switch. Pick a fucking movie. Kill Switch engage. Kill Switch is different from your standard creepypasta, in the sense that you can't reproduce it and you can't play it, but it's still pretty damn scary. Pretty Kill damn Switch, according scary. to the pasta, was made by a small Czech company called Carvina Corporation. As soon as the game was completed, it erased itself, so it couldn't be played again. The old On top of that, Windows there were only 5,000 copies ever made, so the game Didn't is non-existent nowadays. Or something like this? The game sounds rather fun with your choice of two it different characters to lead uh... through a haunted mine that just so happens to be infested with the dead. But sadly, oh. this pasta is simply not true. It was extremely well written by a professional writer oh, with a tiny link like to her site on the Creepypastas page. That is literally what I was trying to say, holy crap. Yeah. We're, we hang out too much. Fallout 3, number station. The this Fallout is made on the Unity engine. This is a creepy <laughs> monster about one of the number stations in the game. Why does that person have to start with, this is a the creepy monster? It's like, we know, that's the list. Is her reciting strange numbers and sentences, such as, Have you watched my YouTube videos yet? 
I uploaded myself kicking bombs in the nuts, <clears throat> followed by the numbers 241612242012. Other sentences two, said things two, like, two, two. The Queen has died today. The world mourns. As on days like these, we are all Brits. Followed by 4231920. When looking at the numbers closer, it is shown that they are all actually dates. The most unnerving about this is 120552820110, or 12.05, May 28th, 2010. The date and time of the death of Gary Coleman. What does this mean about the other numbers, then? It seems only time will tell. Okay. Misfortune. It's not GB. This is like the whole time they're talking all creepy, like they're trying to scare us. GB is about a haunted game. Like, really, what this list, what these lists are, are just story behind the like game. camp it's counselors right with a group of kids on a play the part of a little in, in a camp, just trying to tell scary stories. Them. And you being the well, only the other adult listening to this, you're just like, a strange all right. Was <laughs> this is obviously not real, and someone's gonna like dress the up like the guy from the story to scare people. A text box appears that says, "What up, bitch?" Oh, Jesus. Jesus. You're given the option to choose yes or no, and if you pick yes, then the creature responds with, "Let's." You don't have to modify his voice. You can just cabinet. read the dialogue. And in this room, a text you don't have to go. That says, Choose wrong. And this fortune will be for all your loved ones. Are you ready to play? If the player chooses the wrong cabin, Talk the screen will cut to black. And then a high resolution picture of the creature will appear above a text box that reads, I am God. Many who have played this game have suffered from depression, become jittery in everyday life, and even committed suicide. People say that the game is still People available. People kill themselves the over a game. You can go ahead and play it if you want. At your own risk, of course. You can play it if you want. <laughs> if you want to have depression, look. Tales don't curse. I remember this the Tales doll is a mythical demonic yeah, that alone, that holds even if it was official, in its grip of fear. For those who don't know, the Tales doll is a hidden character in the video game Sonic R. Oh, we lost some shit surrounding that game. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise created by Sega Enterprises. Enterprises. Sonic R was the only game that ever had the Tales doll. The Tales doll looks somewhat different than its origin. It is, of course, a doll with a red gem affixed to its forehead. Supposedly, the curse of the Tales doll is that if you beat Sonic R completely, the Tales doll will jump out of your TV or spontaneously appear and kill you. Frequently, the song Can You Feel the Sunshine in reverse Composed by Why would Richard it be? Jakes Why would it be forward? It has to be reversed. Appears in accounts of the doll. If you take one step deeper into the rumor than the surface of the creepy tale, you will okay, discover just the light from an, an, an urban legend. All right. No, yeah, I'm fine. See, you're fine. Fatality. Tales doll with. Pokemon, creepy black. Dude, that's racist. This creepy pasta is about, about to say, why you gotta be black? Game. When starting Wait, up there the is game, a nothing black seems white. to be out of the ordinary. You get your typical Professor it's Oak's like, speech, be black. name yourself, and then go to Oak's lab to get your friends, first Pokemon. A person Instead that, of just Bulbasaur uh, trying to get online, squirrel, the player has the option to pick a fourth Pokemon called Ghost. Ghost is only level one. His username was actually Jamaican Hedgy. Curse. The sprite of Ghost is also the same sprite as the Ghost to the one you see in Lavender Town. Even if 
Yeah. We're going into battle with Ghost. No Pokemon could attack it. The game was saying that they were too scared to move. So I know what he looks like. Ghost would use curse. The screen would go black, and the cry of your opponent's Pokemon would be heard. When the battle screen would return, the defending Pokemon would be gone, implying it had died. Once the player defeated the Elite Four, the game would fast forward many years later to an old man in Lavender Town, which is supposedly an older version of the player. The game would then enter battle mode, where the player must fight with Ghost. Ghost would eventually win, killing the player. The game would then shut itself off and reset. And then nothing after that? No one dies or anything? It was just a fucked up game? NES Godzilla. He just said that the player dies. Oh. It details the events of what happens to a Godzilla fan who happens well, to be kills a the player of as in, like, in the game. The story begins the with the player experiencing a the body of the NES. And he's looking for a copy of Godzilla to relive some nostalgic memories. As he recalls his accounts of the game, the story goes from some odd experiences to a truly unnerving tale. Throughout his experience, he screenshots every creepy image that the game has to offer, such as weird and creepy looking enemies. The story even goes so far to say that he ended up putting it on eBay, and it's somewhere out there where someone now can even play this disturbing game. That's just fucking terrible editing. Looks like one image, the lower the Little opacity. Auto berserk. Like change the opacity the and like... Days, there was an arcade that's creepy, cabinet, right? called Berserk. It was made and spawned a bit of controversy. No, no. Apparently two people died at the ripe young ages after experiencing heart attacks. This, of course, was after okay, they were Josh. able to post their high scores <laughs> on the game cabinet. Now, as the story goes, Otto is one of the most evil characters in gaming history, as named by several different sites. This is oh. due to the fact that he watches the player oh. die with a smile on his face. However, Otto got his name from one of the developer's bosses, which is Otto, who used to chew people out on the job with a shit ran on his face still. Now rather this no. cabinet is cursed, or if it's just coincidence, Berserk and Evil Otto has made its mark on creepy gaming history. It's like yellow smiley face. This is the most evil video game character ever. Mario. It doesn't even do anything. Oh, we made a character out of that. The Mario, Mario. Uh, the Sonic the the EXE video we made a long time ago. Chat. And that was when he was born. Surrounded in mystery. Well, I mean, the character only existed, day, but we made him a character. The first user to try it reported that the compressed RAR file, simply named Mario, was we really played Sonic EXE, and then he found the text file. And then Mario and EXE the came to be as a characters, characters and the zoo crap alternate universe. Finally, the game itself was not in a format that was available to play. After some adjustments. He managed to explore the chilling tale. When he started playing, he noticed some things out of the ordinary. For example, the opening message was altered. There was no enemies in sight, and no music was played. While going through the levels, each one became less colorful, and message boxes quoting spiteful messages about Mario appeared. Many have speculated that the end of the short title is a representation of Mario's suicide and descent into a hell of his own making. All in all, it makes for an unnerving experience. When a player beat one of the castles, a message appeared, highlighting some gruesome details about a certain victim. But the nightmare doesn't end there. When someone else on the forum returned to decode the text file, they discovered that it was instead an image. When they converted the text file to a JPEG, they found a frightening image. No one is entirely sure what the image is meant to represent. If the image was indeed a murder victim or a joke easter egg, the answer remains a mystery. The answer. 
Someone's probably found it out at Polybius. this point. Seizure warning. Polybius is a theory the that states that in the arcade age, there used to be an arcade cabinet You're called fucked. Polybius. People wanted to play this game so badly that they formed My lives leg. and even punched broke out. But why did the people of Portland, New Oregon want to play this game so badly? According to the creepy monster, because they wanted to, it is said they that this die. was part of a series of experiments done by people. the government in the same vein as MK Ultra. Some of the side effects of playing this game was close to that of LSD, which were night terrors, anxiety, insomnia, headaches, seizures, and oppression. Or became anti-gaming activist after playing it. Why does everything have to cause depression? There. Life already sucks enough. The up. arcade owners claim that many Very true. came into the arcade. Because even when people get paid for their jobs, we're still not even allowed to have money. To theorize that the government may have we have to pay to live. Technically, it's not that far off either, because the government made a deal with Atari, the makers of Battle Zone. To help them make a special good idea. I'm glad we did this. train troops months before Polybius came out, which just adds to the possibility uh, of government involvement. This theory has many aspects to it, such as Polybius has been in the Simpsons TV uh, series, and the other possible theories that surround this game. Well, it just makes you think. Well, I don't like to think. Lavender Town Syndrome. Wasn't it just one of the first oh, copies right, of Pokemon Red and Green came out in Japan? I still want to get Pokemon much Shield. Children the game would be rushed to a I'm hospital. I'm not really interested in the DLC right now, but it's apparently like... committed suicide. This was because of a certain musical theme that played when the player would reach Lavender Town, a dark town with a tower full of graves. The original Lavender Town theme music was an MIDI that was run on two channels called a binaural effect, so that children wearing headphones would hear one thing out of one ear and one out of the other. The two would theoretically combine in the brain to form a unique sound. The way the theme's multiple channels ran together, many children in the range of 7 to 12 received migraine headaches. Eventually, it led to four deaths in children wearing headphones for an extended period of time. These deaths were caused by brain swelling, a heart attack, and two pain-induced suicides. Quick action by Nintendo Corporation and Game Freak got the product recalled within hours of the news. They dithered the track, making it single-toned. The problems caused by an unexpected psychological effect have not occurred since. Alright. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. Holy oh, shit, how'd you call that? Red Dead Redemption I've seen this by Rockstar what has some very light creepy and deep quests and things that make you think. Red Dead Redemption has a few theories and some pretty creepy aspects about it. So let's start with a seemingly innocent newspaper that informs the player the abandoned town of Tumbleweed may be haunted. Now, after a personal exploration of the mansion, I've heard some creepy things, such as footsteps whispering in a door that closes and opens upon itself. I've seen some creepy shadows and a weird tethered-up skinny horse, as well as a few coffins in the basement. Could there have been a murder here? Maybe there's some more to this story than we thought. Upon further investigation, the church's lights are left on at night. On the altar, there's a statement written on the wood. The devil has gotten into the beast. Again, there must be more to what meets the eye in this creepy town. But we've barely scratched the surface of what this game has to offer. So we must move on. Now at this point, if you do not want spoilers, then end the video. For those of you who and don't man. mind, then let's begin. Alright, next video. <laughs> there is a side quest in the game that is given to you by a mysterious stranger who claims to know you. This is important because in Red Dead's story, John Marston is gunned down in a heart-wrenching way. 
And after that's over, you can see the graves of John's wife, John's uncle, and John Marston himself. Three bullets, and three graves. Makes you think, doesn't it? Sonic.exe. Yep. Sonic.exe is one of the most famous and scariest creepy houses known among the gaming community. The story starts off with the player Tom receiving a death and his, from and his feet's Tyler, going through the floor. Not heard from in this is obviously weeks. scary. Uh, it also uh, contained a note saying, Oh, he disappeared. Disc. I, I couldn't get it. He's too fast for me. But due to being it's too big of a Sonic fan, to let go of the disc, he proceeds to play it, allowing his worst nightmares to come into fruition. We know, the we played the game. The first thing the first second when you press start, you can just the image of Sonic. It's a dark gray sky and a blood red lake, with the writing, Sega 666, in the lower right hand side. As it continues, it's like, it's like, are you, you're trying too hard to be scary because you literally aren't. And gory dismemberment of people <laughs> animals. Or it could just be a bunch of ketchup. The game Sonic.exe also has a fan-made port, which just looks like how it is on the creepy cost of described it. It's also the video that you're seeing right now. I remember it used to be terrifying. But no known copy of the actual Sonic.exe exists. Dude, for two weeks I was scared of that. Nowadays I'm just like, what the fuck was I scared for? Earthbound. Earthbound has a massive fan base, and it's apparent why. This NES game it's like they is accidentally find a porn on there. By its fans, with funny, witty writing, a lovable cast of characters, know, know, know. and its innocent, Fine. loving world. Right? Fine. What? Well, that's no. until you get no. to the guy as boss. As soon as I say it, you're just gonna be like, "What the fuck, dude?" You walk up to this random set of tunes, but after further inspection, walking on spaghetti, it looks a lot like a woman's uterus. This in itself is yeah, a that was in the actual game. This isn't a creepy boss. That was an actual thing. The characters we are used to, but what we have seen so far is not even the worst to come. The boss and guy guess is freaking scary as hell compared to the rest it's, of the world. It's, it's scary as now, well. we inspect. Yeah, you sound terrified. The negative space of the boss actually looks like a fetus, and there is a reason for that. After an interview with the head developer of Earthbound, he said when he was a child, he went to a movie theater and walked in on the wrong movie. The movie he walked in on was none other than The Policeman and The Dismembered Beauty. According to the dev, this scared him, and it gave him the idea for this game. Even earlier in the game, you may notice that there is a part of Earthbound where Ness is attacked by police officers. This actually mirrors a case in America, where police brutality was frequent and common. Overall, the Gagas being an aborted fetus and all the creepy imagery that is seen is supposed to tell the tale of how Ness and the developer lost their innocence as a child so early on by being thrown into a cruel and unjust world. This is why it continues to scare gamers to this day. And finally, the number one creepypasta. Ben Drowned. I already knew that. That's just a person named Makeup. The Ben Drowned Creepypasta. Which was a is already creepy stuff, right? This creepypasta has actual footage of the game and a story that connects the videos together. While the gameplay shows the footage of the glitchy and messed up Nintendo 64, the creepypasta explains the player's reactions and how he felt with the haunted Matura's Mass cartridge. This is by far one of the scariest creepypastas out there, with its format of WMV and the fact that it's hard to tell. Have you read Mark Hurt 64 Driven? As well as the overwhelming evidence that I used to read that real, and wouldn't be able to sleep. To Another fact that adds more realism to this creepypasta 
Is that if uh, you like, ask there would be no videos for it. What happened to ben. So I would just sometimes he responds with Ben drowned or other generally creepy things. This leaves and begs the question: Was that cartridge really cursed? Did Ben really drown? And is he really out there today? That's for you, the reader, to decide. And that's why it makes our list. I'd like to wish all of you a happy, safe, but mostly scared filled Halloween. It probably would probably be annoying itself if they actually talked like that in real life. If they didn't sound like they were acting. No. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> One down. One down. Two more. Yeah. Next, the non-gaming creepy process. I actually kind of like the uh, non gaming ones better. I thought I'm going to make it completely honest with you. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> this video contains disturbing content, violent content, jump scares, and sounding loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Creepypastas are essentially internet horror stories or myths passed around on forums and other sites to disturb and frighten readers and viewers. Once you something scary, look at Mortal Kombat 11 fatalities. Those are actually kind of... An internet slang term for a block of text that gets copied and pasted over and over again from website to website. That's just a PNG moving. With pictures audio or video footage related to the story oh, typically gosh, with gory yeah. distorted or otherwise you, shocking it's content. like gaming creepy pastas we covered a few of these at our top 20 creepy urban game legends and so these won't be covered again however these are our top 20 revamping gaming creepy <laughs> So we know what the title is, or you're gonna play the video. God's Mouth. During a mountaineering adventure, a man and woman enter a mysterious cave labeled God's Mouth. Despite the warnings around the entrance, they explore the solitary cave. The man soon feels a strangely warm wall before losing grip of the woman's hand and allowing her to disappear further into the cave. He starts to call for her and look around, but before he knew it, he was alone and trapped, with nothing but four walls surrounding him. After a few hours, he begins to accept his inevitable fate. He sits down and feels the wall touch his back. He begins to cry as the torch slowly fades into darkness, and he sees a hand with painted red fingernails and he watches as the god's mouth devours its latest prey. Mariana Mordegard Glasgow. There was a video on YouTube named Mariana Mordegard Glasgow. If you search for this, you will probably find nothing. A few times you will. You'll just see a 20 second video of a man staring oh, man. at expressions and grinning for the last two oh, seconds. This is actually only part of the video. The full video lasts two minutes and was removed by YouTube after the 153 people who viewed it either slashed marks on their arms, gouged out their eyes, or committed suicide in various ways. The cryptic inscription they carved has not yet been deciphered. 
YouTube periodically put up the first 20 seconds of the video to quell suspicions so that people wouldn't go looking for the real thing and re-upload it. The video itself was only viewed by one YouTube staff member, who started screaming after about 45 seconds. Mr. Widemouth. Mr. Widemouth is about a creepy Mr. entity Jim. of the same name, who is said to appear to children yeah. around the ages of four to six. Mr. Widemouth does his best to lure the child he has chosen into a false sense of friendship. It's believed that he tries to get the child to commit suicide by telling them, If you look at Hardenoff, there will be a trampoline under the window. And when he's out, you will strike back up like a feather. Or, I want to teach you how to jump. Here's what you'll need. It's been reported that kids have been seen trying to juggle knives or attempt to jump from windows before they were stopped. He pesters children until they end up taking their own life, and it's rumored that he takes the children's souls after they are gone to do with whatever he pleases. What the purple guy? The holders. The holders God, is a dude. series of creepypastas what? Is that not for the, the same thing? ways of gathering I mean, different sort sets of, of but... magic items. Up to 538 that would supposedly curse its owner Dude. forever and bring a Nestle Crunch is the shit. To the world once put together. Nobody really knows it's like, these objects. What if figures are awesome? Or and even Reese's is growing on me? But so dude, you cannot you be a Nestle kid. Crunch. Speculation runs rapid. If I see the like a full so bar in a store, is the possibility I won't hesitate to get one. Special institution, ask if to they're available, the and be forced to undergo if a they're, test and power they're cheap. to earn an option. It's like two dollars for a full bar. The people who want to take part in the recovering adventures are called the Seekers. These Seekers Let's see the creepy pauses people are making now. To seek for power, to seek for reunion, or to seek for separation. Their goals are known to mutate and change them into villains and monsters. But we can only hope that one with a just heart prevails over these foes. The SCP Foundation. The SCP Foundation is an organization with a murky past. Various agencies from around the world operate to maintain human universe, independence from extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional, and extra-universal threats. In the past, humankind has been at the whim of these bizarre artworks yeah, no, and similar phenomena. A lot more than doo -doo. But it's now and reached a point Steven in universe. where they can begin to control and obtain these defiances of natural law. D-class personnel recruited from death row inmates are apparently used for human testing in almost oh. every aspect. What? The foundation occasionally runs into other groups, such as the Global Occult Coalition <laughs> and the Church of the Broken God. What, do they make a creepy serum to put inject place, milk? person, animal, or the even fuck? an occurrence. Is that a monkey? They are given an item no. such as SCP-XX and categorized. SCPs are grouped as being seen. Look like a baby Lucy, monkey. Like a monkey. Look like a monkey. that explain Look like a baby at first, but it started looking like a monkey. The foundation protects the SCPs from going into the hands of others. SCP-173 was the first SCP object written and served as the inspiration for the project. It's described to be a statue-like entity that cannot move on direct eyesight and will kill by breaking the neck of a victim, if not observed. How does 360p look that good? Because it was back then. Yeah, but back then it was... Squidward's suicide. I forgot this was not high-end voice. Nickelodeon intern who calls the... Squidward kills himself, next one. A very we all know how this goes. Spongebob, titled Squidward's Suicide, back in 2005. I can't seem to get happy. We're told that the producers of Spongebob Maybe this. Oh my god. The help. episode as a bit of a joke before it was finalized. But this was no Easter egg. 
as I sat and watched the first run of the original episode of Fear of a Krabby Patty. Fear of a Krabby In the episode's beginning, we see Squidward practicing for a clarinet concert, and later that night when he finishes his piece in front of the crowd, things start to get strange. You look like they have tomatoes for The us. crowd, along with Spongebob, had hyper-realistic eyes, and they were all hyper-realistic. very aggressively, and he looked genuinely afraid. The next scene is shown with Squidward sobbing on his bed with absolute silence and a faint laughter in the background before cutting to a single frame of a dead, distorted child mangled up on the pavement and then later on another of a girl who is also mangled in much the same way cutting back and forth to these different horrific scenes and the sound of wind and screaming and crying eventually at the end mysterious voice tells Squidward and then he shoots himself in the mouth with a gun the episode ends the only cartoons he would have survived that happy happy oh I remember that that happy, apple happy on a popsicle stick I'm sorry television what <laughs> Who's made to stop health. being an apple the episode named ends. Happy Apple, who, who taught Mr. children Robinson's. how to act and have certain injuries and criteria. A show that used the to be on Nick Jr. They got creepy and well, creepy well, and well, creepy until after the until first Until people two. got creepy. Things started to get worse. Nickelodeon removed the show <clears> after only eight episodes and removed all traces of the files. Happy Appy helped children when they got hurt. He was a clay apple held up by a rusty bent stick. But as the show went on, it got weirder. <laughs> kids got hurt. He developed Fucking a death stare. <laughs> Patch on yourself, smile. bitch. <laughs> By the eighth episode, <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> even <laughs> The show progressed to get even worse. 2001 reports state that the episode seemed to depict happenings of disasters and hey, tragedies. I'm just checking stuff. It was suddenly and unexpectedly taken Let's off the air faith. without a single trace of its existence. A single trace. What did, you, what did you expect? Export of rock? Candle Cove. This one takes place like a blog post that talks about a very old that one. kids' the TV Pirate show, Cove one. which was about pirates and had some controversy because the main I remember Seminole, being a skin I knew a friend who would talk about creepy pasta. Screaming episode, and that was when I started getting into it a little bit. Except the laughing stock ship screaming at the camera while Janice cried. Yeah, <laughs> show are traded back and forth. It becomes oh, no, clear that pirate. beneath the show's oh, cute no, scene, a low-budget appearance is something very dark and disturbing. And by the end, it's dark. It's implied disturbing. that the show is something much, you much know, more for kids. <laughs> That's actually something the nostalgia critic has said. It was in the, you his, know, for kids. It was in his uh, Jim Carrey Grinch review where he goes, You know, four kids! Oh, I remember this one. Pinkie yeah. Pie kills Rainbow Dash. Why, hello there, everybody. This, this is your favorite that, that picture of That poorly yes, put together yes, flash animation of Disney. Pinkie Pie killing Rainbow Dash. I'm going to tell you about this particular creepypasta known as. Oh, I'm going, going to roleplay as Discord. Little Pony Cupcakes. It is quite possibly the most notorious My Little Pony comic ever source of filmmaker movie. animation. It depicts <laughs> Look how terrible that is! As a serial killer who drugs her friend Rainbow Dash, <laughs> dragging her to a hidden Look how cell. terrible that looks! Pinkie Pie appears wearing a dress made of pony skins, wings, horns, and cutie marks of her previous victims, and begins to brutally murder Rainbow Dash sadistically in order to get that Life special is. ingredient for cupcakes. The fanfic has caused a lot of... Imagine this being a Mortal Kombat fatality. ...has since been viral across the internet. Which it is. ...creating lots of blog posts and alternate endings. How is she still alive? The author she she survives this. ...is Sergeant Smithers. Imagine her actually surviving. The, there's no point to this. Oh, Imagine, is like, that the sound you make? The rake. Yeah. The rake is a it's like chopped your foot off. Ah! That's a real fire. 
It's like they just rip your arm off. It's owl. Like, why, why the fuck did you do that? The rake is my, a weird my like, They just have your body just ripped open. It's like, like dude, what are you doing? They will never attack unless Oh, I remember that. It's just a picture of a rake. Its facial features are so <laughs> Like the garden tool? The rake. With two large eyes and a small mouth. <laughs> there have been reports <laughs> that a floating rake would move around at night in the shadows, raking people's yards. According to the mythology, multiple reports have also been where people's front yards would be clear of all leaves the next day. No one would know why. They all claim it's been done. By a rake. <laughs> and then you just hear like the sound of a rake scraping <laughs> itself on concrete. And it's just in a reverb. And then it ends. Next one, the shovel. <laughs> this is our first, our first laugh of the video. With a rather black and white picture. Next one, the shovel. The shovel. <laughs> It's like when you go on one of your walks at night, you just see a rake, and then it like stands up and it turns to look at you. It's a video game called Slender. The eight pages was made. The Slender Man possesses the. Oh, it's awesome when you laugh like that because it doesn't happen often. Wait, Slender Man's this low? I thought he was higher than that. Interest in children. This is like number fourteen, isn't it? No, fourteen was cupcakes. If oh, you know, so we're a little bit ahead. This is like space. 12. It will teleport to you and take you to purgatory. <laughs> Here, it will stalk you for all oh, eternity. Oh, or man. simply kill you. <sighs> Some forms of this myth even state Dude, that the Slender I remember Man was when Slender Man first became a thing, it was everywhere. Slender Man is a mythical figure. What was that? Often depicted as a tall, thin figure wearing a black suit and a blank face. When did he start becoming a thing? Oh, he was like 2012. Really? Yeah. I thought it was older than that. I thought so too. Why is he on a plane with multiple people? That's clearly the fucking fake. Slender Man is a 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 fake. People can just take an image of like... Video distortions. Like a place dimly lit outside and just photoshop him in there and they'll be like, Ooh, Slender Man. Mmm. Uh, That's a good one. Abandoned by Disney, uh, while it's about a man investigating a shutdown. When was Slender Man called Mowgli's Palace? Maze. Located in Guanaki, the Bahamas. But what he finds there traumatizes him. When he arrives at Mowgli's Palace, everything appears to be normal. On the outside, it Let's looks see. like any other old abandoned manor, rotting and overgrown. Upon entering the palace, oh, never mind. Well, the Slender Man was created on June 10th of 2009. Back and forth. Yeah, I figured it was. I figured it had to have been older than that. See, I was thinking of the game, the Slender Game. Oh yeah, yeah. June 26th of 2012. That ended in crying. Yeah, that was. Then, things took a turn for the worse when the man noticed a mascot-only room. But the odd thing about this room was, unlike all the other rooms in the palace. This one still had its lock on. Curious, the man unlatched the lock and entered. One door was labeled Character Prep 1. Just and inside were multiple Remember that one where it was like Five Nights at Freddy's, but what was with Mickey Mouse so characters? What was Mickey that one? Mouse costume lying in the middle of the floor. Is that this? When I mean, it wasn't that, because it was obvious Five Nights at Treasure Island. Island. The Mickey Mouse costume stood. Oh, I remember that. TikTok is saying yellow blood. And it spoke oh, I'm sorry, mustard. One sentence. Hey, you want to see my hair come off? The demonic like costume fuck. then pulled off its head and took like fuck. blood from it. Yellow. That's what it sounds like when you poo. The man that must be honey. And saw three words written above the doorway, it's reading, Will this please one day come off? No. After oh, that, okay. he fled from the palace. Oh. <laughs> The suicide site. mouse. Oh, another Mickey AVI. Mouse one. My face. Suicide mouse. Dot AVI. It's yeah, a lost episode. Of creepy pasta. It's widely seen as the forefather of the entire lost episode genre. This story is based off of an old, unseen Mickey Mouse episode. The video starts off with a sad Mickey Mouse walking it down the street. It starts off with crazy shit. 
while random piano keys are heard playing in the background. Who starts out with our dick and our pussies all covered in shit? The video starts to become corrupted. The keyboard being <laughs> it's funny in though. Static. Yeah, Mickey Mouse the walking and then it gets distorted and you hear voices. The sound becomes it, more and more be scared. The sound of a horrific female screams. These videos just are just like, like hey. Be afraid. The buildings and sidewalks start We're warping to scare you. in different directions. Boy, the distorted screaming lasts Susan. before abruptly cutting off. A fragmented scene is shown with strange faces, and a man is heard saying, Real suffering is not known. Followed by a gunshot. Mickey Mouse's how, face how can we see the text of its blurry? The the video. But it sounds like a broken music box playing in the background. Oh, look, no footage. The Ronald McDonald House. The Ronald McDonald House charity is supposed to provide is housing for the family. The Ronald McDonald children. House is Ronald McDonald Seems House. Seems innocent, right? Well, there's another side to the charity. There's another type of Ronald McDonald House. Not many people know about it. There's one in most big cities. You won't find it by looking for it. It doesn't even have an address. It doesn't have a sign above the door. And it doesn't have windows. No, the only way you're going to find it is if you're taking Look, he keeps stuttering. The real Ronald is that, McDonald is this House thing? is it's about like, to it's slaughter it's kids, part, wait, sadistic no, torturing, and the underground trade of the snuff film. Oh, it's no, also no, implied that you grind things. kids up with the use of special ingredients in such meals such as the Big Macs. If you're taking creepy, them, there's no escape. disturbing thing. You sealed your that means you should be creeped them. out. They take sealed driving you insane. Why do people say that word that way? They're all there's, there's no escape. Escape? Why, why do people say it like that? It's escape. Escape. Gateway Not ex to the mind. Escape. Ooh. That's, this is an interesting one. A team of scientists so theorized that this a human without any of his five senses I know, but what's it called? Gateway to the mind. perceive the presence of God. They thought the five senses clouded our awareness of eternity. And without them, we could contact God. The test was conducted on an elderly man who had nothing left to live for. They cut off all sensory nerve connections to his brain. Two days later, the man claimed that he could hear his dead wife speaking to him. The scientists found this interesting. Christopher Walken turning into the Green Goblin. Yeah. They to name oh. dead relatives of a scientist and their personal information. After a full week of having dead voices in his head, the man became distressed mm -hmm. and on the verge of insanity. He it's like he's losing an argument online. Asking for sedatives oh my God. so he could fall asleep to stop the voices. Sleep so, work for people keep throwing red shells at him in Mario Kart. Oh my God! <laughs> The deceased in his dreams. Why it's funny? <laughs> later, the man could no longer form regular sentences. So someone told him he's not allowed to have candy until he eats his dinner. <laughs> to <laughs> to <laughs> this kept up for two weeks. During one study session, the man oh. turns out to focus oh, on fish one man. <laughs> first time in the study, even though he was believed to be blind. He said. I have spoken with God, <laughs> and He has abandoned us. Then his vitals stopped, and he dropped dead. Oh my God! It's like he dropped like drop dead, and the doctors are like, the "Finally, <laughs> fucking dead! He dropped dead." Jeff the Killer guy carved a smile into his face. Totally not Joker. He dropped dead. He survives this. <laughs> Three teenagers attack them. After feeling this odd feeling all day and night, he gets a burst of anger, and he retaliated, and got satisfaction from doing it. Jet and Louis flee from the sea. It so happens, their parents find out about it. Jet and Louis naturally looked guilty after fleeing the scene of the crime, but in an effort to save his little brother, Louis takes the blame and is sent off to juvenile detention. Jeff later attends the birthday party, and the teenagers show up. After a fight between the teens and Jeff, Jeff is left covered in bleach and alcohol, and taking the opportunity, one of them set Jeff on fire, and he later wakes up in the hospital. Once the bandages are taken off, the family is both afraid and sorry for him. The teenagers oh, that, that Michael Jackson? was them, 
and oh. tap them and move. Mm-hmm. And Lily oh. is taken out of juvenile detention. Okay. Jex Morgan chucks in on him in the bathroom. And when she enters the room, Jex's appearance is morbid. Oh. He is burnt. He cut off his eyelids so he can never sleep. And has carved his mouth in a way so that he's always smiling. Jeff proceeds to tell his mother that he is beautiful and she should look this way too. Oh, totally her mother runs to the room and alerts her husband, telling him to get to the stairs. Jeff sees creepy. this and violently kills her and the dad. Anyway. Jeff enjoys this and gets so much satisfaction from the person. Wait, he's just cutting he vegetables. To head for I'm cutting, I'm, I'm cutting he the vegetables. enters his dark room and Louis is horrified about what he sees. Because my family this. fully deserves it, I'm going to kill him. Go to sleep. The police showed up later. There were no survivors. That only wants to go after Louis. Smile Dog. What? Smile Dog story oh, consists oh, of an yeah. amateur writer. Smile Dog. That used to creep the house too. of an old lady. Like, Supposedly. Like, she had a story a 3D, for him 3D she model of the vocal cords. Rather than able to use this sound. The Ooh. woman locked herself up in her room, crying you know the, and the, about the It is Wednesday, my dude's guy. She then appeared with uh, killed herself. He's been doing sh- uh, streams and videos of videos of FYLF, the video of the stream ends. I've been thinking of going to his Discord and sending him a bunch of videos for my Twitter right now. Because they're funny as hell, I think you should watch them. That's one of them. They produced the sound. These reports continue to happen. The victim is asleep, resulting in very vivid and disturbing nightmares. If you receive an email named Smile, it's important you pass the image onto someone else. Deleting or not being the mail. We'll it's just someone's, someone's dog. Someone, someone just dropped shows. it and dropped the picture in tea. If the mail is not sent after three days, this picture will deform and show a more demonic smile dog. Thus, it's a completely different image. Even worse uh, nightmares. Attaching the file that is spreading the word is the only way to save yourself from the smile dog that appears in your dreams. Some say that the original legend began with an image of the dead. Ooh, I'm gonna turn negative colors. <laughs> Salgo. See, Salgo oh, is an legend about an ominous entity the uh, one to cause insanity, no, talking about death, how it, like, and destruction of the world. Similar to the creature of Cthulhu, Garfield created by H.P. Lovecraft. It'll show in a little bit. Salgo is an yeah. ominous creature that appears to be horror I remember itself. that was the main antagonist what for the previous monster thing I did a while back. Time. It's believed it's to be like the death of the world, uh, along with the scourge of insanity. It's obviously not real, so it's like... It's not Most real, so it's like... Discrimination, gore, and dismemberment oh. go along with the creature. Oh. Zongo is often a oh, that's a, a rank-ass bird. ...pages and photos of people whose eyes and mouths have been covered in black. Zongo often cultivates into simple childish cartoons or comic strips, which corrupt them and turn them into yeah. hellish-like entities. On paper with nothing but the black eyes and mouth. On forms, image words, and certainly through emails, scrambled text began appearing with phrases like, and he waits behind the wall. Parts the of the firewall become more corrupted, and soon more of its wealth started spreading ominously without warning. It's known as he waits Please. behind the wall with seven hands, armed only with a dead star and a long candle. Someone's stirring spaghetti in the background. <laughs> Username 666. That's the user. That's the this video yeah. shows what happens yeah. when you search for the username 666 on YouTube and then refresh the page a few times. This pasta has a few actually times a few doors. <laughs> One is that the original 666 account contained a virus that changed all the text Fucking into success. When you search for 666 so and refresh the page a couple times, the background turns hellish, oh, tomato sauce. the video turns creepy, and it's just we were looking at Mars. If you click on one of the videos, you won't be able to close, back up, pause, or shut down your computer until the video ends. It works. You know the, you know the easy way to avoid watching that is just, to just walk away from the, the computer until it's over. Your system, it's fine. Just but it messes up computers computer. bad. Just be careful. 
because sometimes it affects other pages too. Uh, 1999. The year 1999 remains to be a bloody child remnant of the Mr. Oh, Mario that. Took offense to the channel consists of wow, the you feel it Mr. Bear Silver and Booby. I forgot what that video was. Wow, do you feel that way? Middle aged man. <laughs> tortured kids he kept in his You're gonna sound very, very I forgot how that song yeah, was. It took so long. To actually cutting and mutilating the kids on camera. Oh, we gotta kill the kids because he's chasing. He's making chicken. To his house. Did you see how he was posing or something? Go, 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 to this day, out there somewhere in the woods of Ontario, Canada, oh, waiting to launch. Thankfully, this video is almost over, so we can get to the surprise. Get to the surprise. At a surprise. Sorry. Boom. 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 Boom.
When they return in the morning, the rappers are left behind at Robert's feet. It's also stated that if people mock him, Robert is said to lay a curse on them, hence all the written apology letters. No, it literally wasn't as creepy as anything else on that list, like... Oh, there you go, I mean... Yeah, that was the thing. Still as hokey as I remember. I don't know what I'm most excited for. So, the guest video, and the one we haven't seen, which would actually make this technically a reaction video, Fawful's Minions video that was posted yesterday, the top 10 scariest nostalgic terrors. And from what I hear, it's not all video games, so this should be interesting. Neither one of us have seen this yet, so... memories we have are when we're the most scared, and they often kickstart patches of darkness you can't ever see through. So, back to the start I go. Time to dig up some of the most profound shocks from my youth, at least in regards to media and maybe even literature. Some games are included too, so you'll only be having thematically appropriate fears. The only personal rule I've set is that anything past age 13 is a no-go. Think that's a good cutoff. Spooky sounds and an eerie mist surrounds memory lane. And some Luigi's Mansion and bowls of monster cereal are waiting for me on the other side. Flick your lights off. I'll meet you there. It's cake to look back on Star Fox 64 and remember it all as dumb shooty action with Muppets talking gibberish. But I never left, and can point to Sector X as the gun to your happy memory's head. The midway point of the easy path sees the team sent in to seek out and destroy a secret weapon, Andross's building. And turns out he stuck it deep within by far the creepiest corner of Lilac. This is not the kind of thing a kindergartner wants to see in their furry pew pew space game. The warning flags raise the instant you hear the music. Never have I heard a piece more in tune with the impending dread of deep space. It's slow, intense, creepy. You can't tell if you can trust it or not. I didn't understand the context of the mission since thinking's only unlocked after age six, but I could hear the warning sign. The sinister symphony continued through what seemed like endless emptiness. There's more junk and debris floating around than there are enemies. You'd swear something beat you here. Eventually, Falco starts freaking me out with uncharacteristic dread of something feeling very wrong. Something's not right here. All culminating with, what the heck? Fox, look behind you! That got me so panicky, I turned around in real life. Admittedly, Spyboard also freaked me out with its cold, autonomous threats, and it cleanly launching Slippy to a desert planet so effortlessly, it hollowed me out. Sector X is a legitimate feat of suspense, and I unwillingly took it with me for many sleepless nights after. Destroy. Destroy. My sleep schedule, you most certainly did. <laughs> ah, dogs. Man's best friend. But pray tell, my stupid ass two decades ago, what if you ain't a man? What if you boy? Little boy. Guys, 
They're just wolves that like us. What happens once they don't anymore? Kibbles and Bits commercial. For a time, I wanted nothing to do with them. Why? Ask Ghostbusters! <laughs> you would expect very little out of this stupid film where four crackheads battle spooks with nuclear Happy Meal toys. There's mistake number one. Mistake number two, asking mom what you watching. I caught wind of the OG Ghostbusters randomly with zero context one night long ago. I saw Dweebish Geeky Nerd Man and felt at home. I felt understood. Suddenly, BURN! Red glowing eyes and sharp claws burst out of giant creepy gargoyle statues. Gargoyle Pretty lady sitting six. in a chair waxing. The door grows a face. Chair grows demon arms and grabs her. Door opens and I want to die. <laughs> arms. Teeth. Eyes. What is that, Ghostbusters? What is that? Look, I get you gotta have your hellhounds, but goddamn, they're supposed to be fake! For the time, and especially to a little kid already clicky about big dogs, the terror mutts looked like they were adopted straight from Satan's kennel. The animatronic effects are almost too good. Are you absolutely sure those actors are safe? It's just so jarring. Most of the movie before and after their scenes are genuinely hilarious and feel good. But every time Vince Clortho and Zool show up, <laughs> horror movie. Dead ass. I threw Cujo's ball into a pit of hell. He brought back more than just the ball. Bad dog. Really bad dog. I like to think the intent of implanting fantasy licensed dread into single oh, digit God. shrimps is. Well, it's just exciting. And often, those laborers of tough love, creators commissioned oh, the dark forces that. to put in their sunshiny shows, turn out as some of the absolute <laughs> best of their talent. My finest case in point, Sink or Swim from Kim Possible. A sharp contrast to the trademark high and dry teenage spy stick, the second ever episode dove headfirst into the Black Lagoon. A pep rally field trip turns to goosebumpy grit as the bus veers into a spike trap just outside of Ron's own nostalgic terror. Camp Wannawee, stranded with no hope for calling help. The class quickly assumes vulnerable positions as Ron shares his horrible memories. Killer squirrels, poison oak, and nasty swim time in the disgusting lake. Meanwhile, something closes in, slowly picking off stragglers from the shadows. Leaving behind only creepy, squishing sounds, massive clawed footprints, and dripping green sludge. That's not a human footprint, Kim. The hell's that genre? Comedy? Where? Actually, the episode does have good laughs. Where? It all culminates in the monster's reveal. An amphibious, sludge-conjuring mutant named Gil. The same swim mate from Ron's Lake story. Transformed through its toxic waste pollution. Out for revenge. The obvious homage to the creature is freaky voice and form. I heard that scream. His disturbing wealth of knowledge on Ron's life. And oh yeah, he's near mutating everyone with his mock made Gil. One of the creepiest cartoon entities of my entire youth. The episode's masterful execution and all its music cues, sound design, pacing, suspense. God! A spooky campfire chiller in animated form. We've all been told never feel stupid for being scared. Well, does that help when your fear is stupid? Torn off bed stickers, hacked empty Pepsi cans, ah, about dummies on a stick. I don't trust scarecrows. Never did. Always felt like the perfect place to stuff a dead body. Oh, I can tell you why. Cap turns scared the crap out of me. Oh, oh. Cap turns a good grass ghost type. Scary Pokemon. kid seems to be a game, one that devs <clears throat> like playing just as much as their own. 
can definitely tell you who's winning it. Chuck went up for Pokemon. How high is that score? Shockingly lower than my preteen heart rate, courtesy of Stephen King Cactus Camara in my magical animal machine. It's amazing what you can do to a child's mind with only a few cursed words. And those which Game Freak slapped on the dex entry of the creepiest grass type ever made me scared to play Pokemon. If a traveler is going through a desert in the thick of night, Cactor will follow in a ragtag group. The Pokemon are biding their time, waiting for the traveler to tire and become incapable of moving. Those words haunted me. I was to actually believe that Cactur were following me through the whole game, waiting for me to tire to get me. What? The damn thing already looks like he wants to wear my flesh and shove the rest of me inside his freaky hay mummy buddies. But telling a lone traveling king that the cactus monster actively hunts lone travelers without them ever seeing? Ah! Call it over imagination if you like. This single Pokedex entry made me fear playing Pokemon Sapphire for years. I banished that desert from my mind. I released the one I evolved. Hell, I barely saved at all after that. Oh, an emerald? You didn't help! After spending thousands of years in harsh deserts, its blood transformed in the same substance as it said. Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, Pokemon gets creepy. A nostalgia bomb explodes in a way that, while the blast doesn't last quite long enough to outlast your youth, the smaller flames linger, keep hot, always in the same place. A place literally burned into your mind. It's a childhood staple of those haunted landmarks and biomes that never feel right. Your own personal nope land, announced Count K. Rulikar. I'm back. <laughs> Creepy Castle, Donkey Kong 64. It's easy to forget that a curse is still magic. Even still, I never lost thought of the spell DK64's Creepy Castle bound to me all those years ago. The best Donkey Kong game's best level is a heartbreaking <laughs> inter of the haunted house <laughs> severed hand delivery of the company of the horror experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the it's just how he's moving, it just reminds me of that. Anyway, endless rain, bottomless <laughs> pits, haunted lighting, ghoulish spirits laughing down at you. Some of the best Halloween atmosphere in gaming is constantly hovering overhead, and it stabs at your child energy with a sharpened orange lollipop with every beat of its eerie overture soundtrack. The castle's exterior is like the most badass trick-or-treat stop ever. Giant hedge maze, undead tree stump, moat and bridge. Nice. Yet the chambers spiritually carve your insides until there's nothing left. These rooms can legit make kids cry, man. Courtesy of the fog ocean, the glowing, almost living floor, and Banshee's busted nuts in the torture dungeons. That's sex to die for? Is it really worth turning little Timmy into a serial killer? <laughs> Cardboard crock go. <laughs> okay, sure. Apology accepted. You're pretty badass now, Creepy Castle. Be proud of all the size-ass pants you obliterated. I loved Scooby-Doo in my early years. The mysteries, the characters, the cool monsters, Scooby making stupid noises. Ugh, I love the stupid noises. <laughs> but upon entering kindergarten, poof, talking dog got magically lame all of a sudden. Look out, monkey bars. I just got in this school and I'm already too cool for it. Got no more room for stupid quiche. Holy shit. Oh, Nostalgia Crank actually reviewed this. Rolly, rip, raggy. God bless the Scooby Doo Stenstrom Tetralogy, man. Or at least a deity of similar power. The first of those. 
four epic resurgence films damned the franchise to a circle of hell every meddling 90s kid begged an invite to. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island was the first and only excuse the world ever had to shake and shiver while watching animation's dominant doggo. Let me repeat that. Scooby-Doo scared kids on purpose. Even then, I didn't respond to zombies much, but their calculated placement within the safest schlock and retro cartoondom? God, the huge risk they took. It could have easily killed them. Instead, they killed and buried ages of voyagers under the cursed island bayou of Moonstar and raised them all to attack every toddler in America. And not a single <coughs> cup of smoke and mirrors was blown. Mystery Inc. face off with real undead, real supernatural forces, real ghosts and monsters, Get decapitated fucked. zombies, halved zombies, cat demons bursting out of human skin and sucking life force from mortals. Like, Scoob, are you okay? I wasn't. I was fusing with my covers and worshipped every cat I saw out of fear for being ritualistically raisined. A thrill I never unfelt. <laughs> Taking risks is an exercise in evolution, and the reason why a lot of us stop practicing it, well, you could say it's often misspelled. Select geniuses who mistakenly exercise the demons out of their mind and into their art. Yeah. Think you effed up. <laughs> oh god, where were you on this one? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Innovative Agony. A show so tuned in to the movement of art, it stood for evolution through pain of children. Courage the cowardly dog. I could kick off every alphabet in the whole infinite multiverse with how many A's this show forced out of me. On record as one of Cartoon Network's downright best. But at what cost? Y'all are supposed to touch the hearts of kids. Why they felt the need to poke the antics of a cute purple doggy and his honey-coated hallmark card of a family with molten finger knives? You know, I still need help on that one. A wide majority of episodes actively drive Goosebumps to cuddle its crucifix in the holy hot tub. Two undead serial killers posing as directors of a zombie flick and filming them disemboweling the sweet old grandma on camera. An unshrinking puddle in a desert that's a gateway to the lair of a monstrous man-eating woman. A hotel ran by a psycho kill that feeds his guests to giant spiders, a PG parody of the Exorcist, Death by Locust Plague, casted by a demonic CGI mummy king, that thing, freaking werewolves, head chopping ghost vikings. Tune in tonight after Ed, Ed, and Eddie. What the f <laughs> True, it's often really funny and genuinely heartwarming, but wow! can get away with murder all you like if it's a drawing, I guess. Please. Oh, uh, Jaws. Dear parents, want your kid to grow up artsy, weird, and even serial killer capable? Well, just scare the holy hell out of them with moving picture boxes. What kind of mom shows her four-year-old the most culturally formidable film on the goddamn planet? The best one ever! Jaws was my first media-born scare ever. I'm a brother in brutally torn off arms with the last three generations. Cause the dead-ass best movie of all time warned us of the horrors beneath. A little too well. Peter Benchley's satanic tome of a novel splashed onto the big screen in such a way that I actively dreaded bats. Just the form it displayed, keeping so much of the demon fish to our imagination. This non-perishable thalassophobia in a kin. It was horrifying. Still is! Not 
only making me deeply scared of open water, but leading me to forever tie it to the universal fear of the unknown. What does it look like? What does it look like? Tell me, God! He never does until it's too late, leaving only a harrowing score to signal its approach, and I'm left to be gored by my haunted imagination. Sure, the All-Stars of Amity tattooed a permanent, genuine smile on my face. They were sharpeners for all those shot glass-sized shark teeth with how flawlessly they calmed you down, just in time to drag you under in a red cloud of your own entrails. Yeah, I repeat, I was for seeing this the first time, and I retained far more than Mom probably expected. You don't just forget the grip of a monster's jaws. None of man's fantasies of evil can compare with the reality of Jaws. Damn. Number two, baby. Let's keep going. Gather round as I tell you how I learned to scream. Oh shit, this is the... Oh, it's it's the year 2000. My kindergarten ass catches more than a glimpse of this new VHS. Girl chilling at home. I actually popcorn. never seen Scream. I haven't movie. either. I just God know the guy who kills people. Getting all those. chummy chummy, discussing your favorites. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. The creepiest movie line ever kicks off a hurricane of crippling Don't anxiety. Don't you know what I'm looking at? Violent panic attack patiently targeting your neck. The scary voice threatens her hang-ups instantly, splashing the tone with a final bloody warning. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish, understand? <sighs> yeah. Blinking ceases, heart beats in a blender. Meanwhile, I legitimately feel in danger. The sicko laughs off her threats to call the police, revealing that he knows her boyfriend's name, and even has him bound and gagged on the patio right next to her. Oh God! The lights are cut. Ghostface forces to play oh. a game. Ghostface trivia. Answering one right, failing the next. Bye bye, boyfriend. <gasps> Game night concludes with the scariest question of all. What door am I at? The vibe gushes blood as horrifying camera pans reveal the killer's life form stalking through the house. I don't know why I'm kind of scared now, too. The parent's car approaches, only for it to. <laughs> What up, bitch? Covering my eyes as the first stab connects, and trying to unsee oh. the horror as the final stabs mix with her parents' terrifying realization. <laughs> the opening oh, jeez! Like oh, it's the opening of the movie. In me for years. First off, kindergarten. Kindergarten. Second, well, it's the best slasher film ever made. The execution literally kills. And third, a lot of the isolation felt right in my neighborhood. We barely had any neighbors. We didn't have caller ID. And I personally knew people who owned that damn mask. Every ring of the phone made me scream and run until high school. Thanks, Mom! Can we pause real quick? It's like, um... Wait a minute, what was I gonna say? Uh... I immediately forgot what I was gonna say. That was a waste of time, alright. One merry promise of fairy tale story time on that average day in second grade ended with a monster tailing my shadow for ages. The woodland menace of Appalachian folklore, Taily Poe, is a terrifying myth that tells of a hunter isolated deep in the woods fighting starvation. 
One day, he blindly shot at the sudden movement made by a mysterious raccoon-shaped shadow, severing the animal's long, meaty tail and forcing it to flee. The man, on the verge of starving, eats the tail and goes to bed. And in the coming hours of darkness, something comes for him. Under the calm lyrics of the night's music rose the slow, faint scraping of sharp, Claws against his cabin door. All the while, a demonic, raspy voice whispers the words. <sighs> the clawing grows louder, and the freaky, furry thing crawls up to the foot of his bed and stares the man down with his piercing, red, glowing eyes, demanding its daily hope. The petrified man sticks his three dogs on it, chasing it back into the woods, with one less dog returning every time the creature comes back. Finally defenseless, the monster owls. I want my table. For carrying the man to bloody shreds in the cabin with him. <laughs> the creature, having taken revenge, Whispers, I've got my Taylipo. The Taylipo legend haunts me to this very day for not only scaring me senseless, but innovating my entire fear response. This ghost story is the reason I'm so vulnerable to sounds. The grisly way it telegraphs its approach through feral scratching noises and shrill, demonic, non sapient threats legitimately traumatized me into thinking every unidentified noise will come to kill me. I'm not even kidding. Every detail of this fable resonates a demonic energy and has shaped what I conceive as scary to this day. Was my day, oh, Take it if you dare. This is being Fopple's menu. Sleep <laughs> And now, give it up Man. for the high tier patrons. Panther J, two of them, 1989. Diamond Ice, oh. Skeleton, 977. Mathtron, 5000. Look at that, I'm a little Thomas Drury, Lucario Smash 246, right, God Falking Tarnit! You Alfred can't be Rio scared Jones. of that. No, Mom, I wasn't. I was just like, whoa. Zero Z. Jay that was Arnstein, the thing. Morgan Arvin, yeah, like, it, it gets me because I've never seen the screen before. John the Peak. Yeah, John the Peak. yeah I've just seen the opening of that. I'm just like, Cortemont, four, four, fuck, seven, dude. Azazel, the Undying, Cody Thomas, Peter Shepard, like, Christopher, what, what gets me about just watching that is like, Michael I can watch like a character in the game like Mortal Kombat where a character Seance, can just get stabbed or something Bros, please, and I'll be like, and I'll be fine. Watching someone in real life get stabbed, Patrick fake or not, it's like, mm, I don't like seeing that. It's kind of the main reason why I hate needles. And I just realized that, that was what I was going to say earlier. Eddie Toxpin, Nathaniel Sterling, Doba Shikhan. Alan, oh, Charles Meeker, the second, Fencer Dolan, Del Fuego, Shiro, THR, Trouble, Trombone, Eddie, 4X Guy, Joe Z. Mark, when the guy sees the Taylor Pope, Z Soul, Emerald, Patch, <laughs> 192, oh, Kayla, Lego Joe, 11, <laughs> AW Goji Fan, when you're losing Lego an argument Circle, online, Garka, 23, Luke, Justin, <laughs> Shining, <laughs> that's where he was, 777, yeah. Crocodile King, 25, Zay Zandler, Alexander Gradesh, oh, a lot of people. Philip Cross, The Bonding Traveler, Jade, 2800, Sonic Sceptile Warrior, Solitaire Seamus, Nova Strife, Grandmaster Augustus, Mitchell Roberts, and Anthony Lucero. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Man, I got I kind of got chills the more it was it was going down. Like, look, crap.
Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh my. Jeez, dude. Whoa. That kind of cemented this entire thing, because for a lot of that, for a lot of that top ten, we were silent. I mean, I, don't, I know it was new, but like, it was like. Well, I'm just trying. I was just trying to pay attention. I know it was boring to some people watching it, but. Yeah. Well, we can talk over the first two because we've seen it before and we know how hokey it is. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna go to bed. And uh, I don't know how. I don't know why you would enjoy this, but. Um, but yeah, that was a Halloween special. Uh, um, hope you guys enjoy this. I, again, just, you know, just fucking do whatever the hell you want. If you enjoy it, that's fine. If you don't enjoy it, then sure, why not? And also, like what the guy said earlier, have a fun, safe, but skilled that fucking ruined it. All right, why? Happy Halloween, people. Fucking go get fucking candy or razor blades or whatever. What are you, Dad? When you drunk? I'm joking! Since I'm still in costume, I might as well say the thing. I'm the nostalgic critic, I, re I remember, so you don't have to!